making a classed map like these choropleth maps here, how do we decide what the numeric values of these categories should be? Well, there's actually a lot of different ways to do it. There's all of these different methods that are shown here. And you can see that these are all applied to the same data set so that we can get very different patterns associated with our maps just by choosing how we break out these categories. You can see each of these categories is different than the others because they're all based on these different methods. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these methods. This is a one that's very popular called the Jenks Natural Break. So what it's doing is for all 50 of these states, it's kind of building a histogram to show how um, many values would fall into each category. And then it's looking for natural breaks in that histogram in order to decide how to break it up into these, uh, into these five different categories here. And um, so this is good for unevenly distributed or skewed data and is often the default that we use. We can define our own intervals if we want to, such as this one here, which um, basically stops at all of the thousands from 84 to 1000, and then between 1010 and 2000 and so forth. And then we would get a map that looks like this. However, we could also use an equal interval. So after we built the histogram moving along the um, x-axis, we would just divide that into even partitions. And in this case, you can see that every 9, or 920, we make a new class break. So um, it goes to here, then another 920. Each one of these between these two numbers here has, um, has 920 as a value between those. So we would call that an equal interval. And uh, that's another way that we can make these classification breaks. Another way is we can do it from a statistical perspective. So if we take a look at all of those numbers, and then if it looks something like a um, normal distribution, or even if it doesn't, we can break it up so that we can find the mean, which would be right in the middle here. And then we can find out um, what one, two, one and two standard deviations are in the plus and minus direction from there. So that if we're looking at this value here, these would be about the average values in these two states here. And um, the ones that are, the ones that are um, lowest would be the brown ones, and the ones that are highest are the dark blue ones. So that's kind of looking at the um, numbers from a statistical perspective and using a standard deviation in order to create these classes or categories for our choropleth map. And another method here is called the geometrical interval map. And this basically multiplies each class range by a constant so that as we go up through the values, we, um, we have something that turns out looking like this, or if we're looking at the, it on a county level, like this. So this is really good for strongly skewed data, which is often true of population. We have some areas that have extremely high population, and a lot of areas um, with lower population, they just wouldn't break out of a map as different categories or classes if we didn't use something like this geometrical interval approach to uh, classifying our data.